Coming off the uh, conference tournament, uh, and it seems like that was two weeks ago, <laughs> but uh, it had a great tournament over in San Marcos, and I thought it was well put on and well ran by the Sun Belt. Uh, totally went different. To f it didn't go to form. I, I thought we'd play Troy in the final game, and then we ended up playing Coastal Carolina twice. And so come out of there with three wins, though. Uh, one different way, won the championship, one to nothing. That was kind of a, a aberration of our a lot of our. We haven't had many wins like that, and I thought that was really good for us going into postseason. And was really happy with the girls. I thought they got sharper each day, uh, defensively and summer pitching. And then <clears throat> um, just to be able to win again on the road, and then win in a tournament format on the road, I thought was a good preparation for the NCAA regional. Come back in. Uh, took a day off Sunday, uh, let the girls kind of relax, uh, had a crawfish boil, and just let them hang out around the ball field. Uh, then we went to the Peach last night, had a great crowd, unbelievable the fan base, and the way they participated in the uh, seating announcement show. And the excitement was through the roof. I, I really was impressed by our fans and the fan base and the way they turned out at Pete's. I never saw anything quite like that. And uh, really appreciative of that. It made it fun for our girls and our coaches. Uh, and then we got the draw. And for the first time in 11 years, the draw was almost exactly what I thought it was going to be. I thought that I thought we'd go to Ole Miss, and I thought that we would um, – play SEMO if we went there because it made sense for SEMO to go down there. I wasn't expecting to be seated at 11. I thought it might be a 12, 13, even a 14 seed. So I thought that was really good for a good break for us where we we're going to catch. We stayed outside the top five national seeds. We'll, we'll get a six seed. So I'm happy with it. I'm really happy with the draw. I'm happy with the way it's, it went. Um, now we, you know, obviously we have to, Ole Miss is a really good ball team. SEMO, Southeastern Missouri, uh, back home we call it SEMO, but Southeastern Missouri, school very close to my home uh, town where I grew up. And they're a very competitive ball team. They've got one of the best teams they've had in years. Coach Redburn's done a great job with that program. They're veterans, juniors, and seniors. They can really hit. They can really pitch. Uh, they're going to be a great first game opponent. And then uh, Ole Miss has is is really exceeded all expectations this year. And Coach Smith is a very good coach, and he always gets his team to rally and play really well at playoff time and tournament time. So, we've got you know, we've got a really uh, two tough opponents in, right in front of us. If we get to UT Chattanooga, also another very, really good team. Um, coach Frank does a great job over there. So we're going to have to play our best ball of the year, and, and but you got to like the, the road that we have. Uh, you know, I've got to schedule better next year, and I've got to make some adjustments. And and you have a very fine window, uh, very minimal room for error because you have basically, you know, you have your out-of-conference opponents. And obviously, you don't want to schedule 25 top 25 teams. So, you know, I, I, I thought I had 10 games on the schedule that would be top 25. And, and those teams, you know, seven games was Baylor, o Oregon State, and California. I thought those teams all had a chance to be top 25. I would have thought that five of those seven games in the year would have been top 25, and they didn't. They were all outside the top 25, outside the top 50 in the case of Oregon State and California. And then we had Oklahoma two games, and we only got one in. You know, and that just that turned out to be the wrong. It's like buying stock in the wrong business. I bought stock in the wrong schools this year. But I'd do it again because Coach Neimeyer is a great coach. He's done a great job at Cal. And Coach Glenn Moore is a great coach at Baylor. And that's a good program. It just – things didn't go right with our schedule. I think the things I can learn from that is, <clears throat> you know, maybe instead of 10 games, try to get 15. I tried to schedule. I tried to get games with several of the SEC schools. Everything last year was on late notice. I got here in the middle of the winter. There was a lot of reasons why our schedule wasn't what it should be. But the important part going forward is to be sure we got, I think, 14 games against teams that we think will be in the top 25 next year. And then we need one or two Sunbelt teams to be in that top 50 at a minimum. And hopefully we have at least one more. Like last year we had Texas State in, in the top 30. 
uh, at times in the top 25. They were in the top 25 of polls in the year, and I think they were 30, 31 in the RPI, two seed at UCLA. And so we had five games there in the conference. This year we got nothing. We had no no top 50 teams in our conference. We had no top 25 in the polls or anything. So we need the Sun Belt to, to step up, and we need it to get stronger. And, you know, I don't know if we can count on that next year. So I think it's really important that we go out outside our conference and, and try to schedule four to eight more really good opponents. Having said that, you sound like you're pretty is the word, satisfied that you're going to Ole Miss. Uh, very satisfied with a draw. I'm very comfortable with Ole As a coach or a player, um, I think there's certain places you're really comfortable. And Ole Miss has always been a place where I've always looked forward to going. My teams have always played well. We've always hit well in that environment. It's a friendly, it's a friendly place. Um, I, I just like being on that field. We got beat in a championship game of the SEC tournament there one year, I believe, uh, against Alabama. But we made a, we made a run, got the championship game, and then I, I don't remember losing a game to Ole Miss ever at home or on the road when I was in the SEC as a hitting coach. So I'm comfortable. I like playing Ole Miss. I think it's a, a really good opportunity for our girls. No, I don't think that the bulletin board material is Oklahoma City. I mean, nothing's bigger than the opportunity to go to Oklahoma City. And you, you shouldn't need anything else to be motivated by except the opportunity to get your girls on that field in front of 10,000 people in Oklahoma City. And uh, I know it's a thrill for me as a coach. And and for the girls, it's, it's, a, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. We got seniors on this club. It's their last chance to get back to Oklahoma City or to get to Oklahoma City. And that's all the motivation we should need. Obviously, you guys are focused on the postseason. Just reflecting for a moment, what does this make sure you don't mean to you guys? It means nothing. You know, the win streak means nothing right now. And it's it's one game at a time. Success is only today. And whatever you do today, it's gone tomorrow. And so success doesn't carry forward. Winning, uh, having a winning streak doesn't do anything for you. It, it's just we need to win. We need to get in a position to play our best ball. In fact, we don't need to think about winning. We need to think about the process of just having great practices this week, feel like we're prepared when we walk on the field, feel like that, you know, we're emotionally and physically ready to play at a high level. Uh, you know, we'll look at our opponents this week, and the one thing we know, we know we're playing SEMO, and I think it's a pretty good bet that we're going to see either Rook um, or or number 15. Um, my name, my name's going blank. I've just been watching film for an hour. But anyway, we know the two pitchers we're going to face. One's a senior, one's a junior, and we'll watch film on them. Well, you know, I've been charting pitches. We'll try to find out the tendencies where they work, where they go back and forth across the plate, up and down, uh, how much they use to change up. Try to get as much information as we can on those and be real familiar with. And then, and then obviously, you'll be prepared for Ole Miss and in the, in the eventuality that we get to play them in the championship, uh, which is what we hope to do. But you can't overlook southeastern Missouri because they're a very good ball club. And so that's the one thing. It's a little bit more predictable in a 14 tournament than an 18 tournament. Last week we were heavy on Troy. Everything was about getting ready for Troy all week. And then we never saw Troy. So, and that may have hurt our hitters a little bit as the week went on. But, you know, we figured out a way to win. And that's what we're, our goal will be this week to try to figure out another way to win. No, I don't think the girls probably even know how many games we won. In a row. I don't know how many we won in a row. It's just I'll read it and they're like, "Wow, that's a lot." But other than when I read it, I don't. It's just, it really you can't allow yourself to get caught up in what happened yesterday. And I know our girls; they're they're excited about getting here, you know, and and getting to work. And and we had a great practice this morning. And we'll have a, uh, we'll have enthusiasm. We're watching film at one thirty, and then we'll be out on the field hitting. Um, you know, from 2.30 to probably 6, and 
the kids are good. the kids are excited about the opportunity in front of them. I think that the the successful season they've had and the win streaks and all that, what it has done, it's given them a lot of confidence. They believe they can win. They believe they can compete with anybody and and uh, so I think that in that sense it's been a really good the positive thoughts of and the positive things that happened to our program, we're in a really good place right now.